judges have asked for all the attorneys in the case to prepare a brief and file it with the court no later than January the 14th. At the same time, we've also been requested to submit uh, any plans for constitutional reapportionment or any plans that we think is con constitu are constitutional in the event that uh, the court might want to consider them. If you've been asked to file further briefs, it would appear that the whole thing isn't over. Have the judges given any indication as to when they might have a ruling? Oh, no, the, the, the case is not over. The uh, judges have indicated a desire to reach a decision prior to the filing deadline on February the 7th. Councilman Zita, how seriously were you burned? Oh, very mildly. <laughs> Thank you, Don. I just burned my hands a little is all. How did you happen to discover the fire? Who was the first one in there? Well, we first had a, a notice from uh, our maid that there was a, an explosion in the water heater. And uh, when I got there, it was burning pretty, uh, pretty uh, violently, and I took a fire extinguisher and attempted to put it out, but it backed up on me a little bit, singed my hair, and... and uh, burn my hands, but I'm in fine shape, thank you. Were you alone in the house? The no, minute? all our children were with us, and, and no I had a cold today, so I was a little late getting to work. We did not realize that we were going to have to deal with uh, this problem uh, immediately, and we did not know that the San Antonio court was going to hold the ad valorem tax unconstitutional. Uh, at the time this committee was appointed, I think the Senate w would have uh, uh, made uh, this committee larger and given us an opportunity to have both rural and urban school districts represented. This committee was originally designed for urban education problems, but this decision has a very far-reaching effect in rural Texas, and rural Texas must be represented along with urban Texas on any committee, I think, that's writing a new public education formula. Have you given the committee any kind of a deadline, or do you expect a solution from them at any particular time? Well, I think uh, the governor uh, is going to have to determine whether he's going to include this in his call, and I hope that Governor Smith will uh, let us know in the next few days whether he plans to let the session of the legislature that must meet in the spring of 1972, uh, whether he's going to give them an opportunity to work on, on this problem or not. If he is, then this committee must uh, come up with some recommendations within the next 60 or 90 days. Of course, we're in the middle of the hearing at the moment, and of course our position will be the same whichever way uh, the situation comes out, that we only sought to protect the people who believed in us, and that was our members, who had shown good faith in, in the club by um, making reservations for this trip with us. Uh, of course, uh, we hope that if the judge rules in our favor. Uh, of course, if he doesn't, well, we'll, we'll try to find some, uh, some other tickets so that the people uh, may get a chance to go to the Super Bowl anyhow. The new director is 45-year-old Arthur Bush, a former professor at Rice University.
Senator John Tower administered the oath of office, which officially gave Bush the responsibility for federal pollution control programs in Texas and the other four states under his jurisdiction. And he comes well qualified for the job with 20 years of experience in the environmental field. Well, as the regional administrator of Region 6, I think that uh, we need to start first with a definition of pollution, and mine is that pollution is evidence of man's activities. This means that all of us are polluters, no matter what facet of our activities we uh, focus on. So what I propose to follow is a balanced program of enforcement, cleaning up the environment, keeping industry solvent, but keeping the populace healthy and happy. Protection of the environment has become one of the big stories of the 1970s, and Bush has an advantage as the new EPA director for this area because Texas and the other four states under his jurisdiction do not have the pollution problems which exist in many other areas across the country, and his responsibility will be to keep it that way. Jack Hill, Channel 8 News on the move at the Dallas office of the Environmental Protection Agency. Well, citizens of the community particularly have called to our attention the problems in three areas that relate to, uh, to uh, human relations. One is that there's still a good d deal of discrimination in Fort Worth, and so we're going to give some attention to what we can do to make sure that everybody has an equal access to housing. And two, uh, we have a lot of sub people living in substandard kinds of conditions in the kind of housing that's really unfit for habitation and uh, we're hoping to promote uh, a systematic kind of inspection of houses that will allow uh, the standards, housing standards people to upgrade housing at a much faster rate. Is it possible that perhaps there is such a thing as a slum lord in Fort Worth or maybe more than once? Oh, uh, we've got several people, yes, who, who have a number of houses that are continual problem to, uh, to the city and that are substandard. The goals of the Commission are three. They want a fair housing ordinance for Fort Worth, they want systematic inspection of housing in the city to make sure that it is up to standards, and they want more housing for low-income families in Fort Worth and in Tarrant County. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News on the Move, Fort Worth. Inclement weather, that is bad weather conditions, ice and so forth. Uh, makes da driving dangerous, uh, makes uh, ease of transport difficult, and therefore the donors uh, have difficulty coming to a central position to donate blood. We're not in a position to go into the periphery and many places and draw blood because of the technical nature and the uh, qualifications of personnel that are needed to do it. Uh, the second thing is the cold weather promotes upper respiratory disease, and there has been an exceedingly high incidence of viral upper respiratory disease and also uh, gastrointestinal illnesses. The, the important facet about this year and what has made it worse, in my opinion, than the other years is the fact that there's been such a protracted convalescent period. Well, Jerry, it is uh, critical in that aspect of it. Uh, I think that uh, we just, again, going to go on our same philosophy of playing them one at a time and doing the best that we can. And we've had very much success over the season by uh, looking at it this way. And uh, we do our winning. I think that'll take care of everything. But I think the game against Tulsa is probably our key game where I think if we can beat them in their own building, I don't think they can catch us for the rest of the year. I'm hoping they can't unless we have a complete collapse. And another thing, Jerry, I think we're hale and healthy again. We have all 22 skaters ready to go. And again, it makes my job that much more difficult who to choose out there because everybody can play in this club. And that's a, a good position for our club and really for myself to be in. You've been in positions like this before uh, where if you could have won a certain game here or there, you could have increased your lead then. Of course, you're so far, eight, eight points is quite a uh, good beat ahead. But would that, would that be due to injuries perhaps in the past? Uh, no, I think that uh, the fact that every time we got four points ahead of Tulsa, uh, I think that we've got a little complacent and said that, well, we're going to win it. And uh, we've uh, got shot down twice here, two key games against Fort Worth. And uh, 
Uh, I forget which other club it was. Tulsa beat us here in our own uh, uh, rink and beat us uh, back to back games and uh, narrowed the gap to two points. And as far as one, and uh, that is the reason why we haven't increased it. And now we have eight points, which is a considerable bulge. And I think that if we could win in Tulsa, which is a really a four point game as far as we're concerned, I don't think they could catch us the rest of the year again, as I said, unless we could completely collapse. How could you compare your current Hawks with your better teams of the past? Well, I think our current Hawks uh, team probably may, might not be as good talent-wise as our championship club, but I think we have over, more overall depth, and I think we have, uh, the way young Dumas has come along, we have excellent goaltending, and the caliber of Jack Norris are probably a little bit better than the way he played that year. And uh, I think our defense probably is a little stronger, maybe a little greener, make a few more mistakes, but I think we're bigger and stronger that way. I think we're stronger uh, depth-wise up front. We almost have five forward lines, and that's a good, every one of these boys want to play, and they're going to have to play. We shouldn't have any passengers. So I don't foresee any real slump for our hockey team. The man for whom the hospital is named, Carr P. Collins Sr., was honored at the ceremonies. Collins, a longtime Dallas business and civic leader, started the ball rolling for the structure in 1968 with a million dollar gift. A large portrait and plaque just inside the entrance dedicates the hospital to the Collins family. The hospital itself will be used primarily as the rehabilitation and psychiatric center for the huge Baylor complex. The hospital has done away with the traditional look and has come forth with new, bright, contemporary surroundings. The entire hospital is carpeted and the rooms gaily decorated in shades of blue, orange, gold, and green. Occupational therapy rooms for rehabilitation are on several floors of the seven-story structure. A large, spacious gymnasium for physical therapy is on the ground floor. The hospital will accept its first patients on Monday. An open house for the public will be held Sunday from 2 until 5. Hospital officials have been waiting for a long time for a facility such as this. They spent many hours in interviewing patients to determine exact needs prior to building. No doubt, the Carr P. Collins Hospital is a welcome addition to one of the largest privately supported hospital complexes in the nation. Jerry Park, Channel 8 News, on the move, the Baylor University Medical Center. This is, uh, again, a planning group. 
uh, the only action that they will take will be make recommendations to the legislature and to the governor. So this committee or this group then is essentially a, an advisory one. Uh, and they're, they're charged with drawing up plans and with helping the governor decide what he needs to do. That is correct. And making recommendations to the legislature. The statutes governing the reporting of contributions and expenditures were brought to the attention of many and uh, I believe clarified. clarified. I think that the candidates uh, know what's required of them and if political parties in this state and their leaders uh, will take this same step as the candidates are going to do, I feel, uh, the people of Texas can have a better judgment of their political party and their leaders.
To bring this more in line with these other 31 states, the attorneys in the office at the present time are drafting legislation, uh, placing uh, political parties uh, in the same reporting system as candidates. We hope to have that legislation, the draft of it, re ready very shortly. And uh, if I am still Secretary of State <laughs> at the next session of the legislature, I, I certainly intend to recommend it. And in the event I'm not, I hope that my successor will do so. The fire department is very effective and efficient in answering fire calls. Their response calls today are uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of four minutes on the average. They are very efficient, they are effective, they are well trained, and uh, the strategic locations that uh, the fire department has over the entire city of Dallas would be a great advantage in reaching an injured person. How much will it cost the city of Dallas to take over the ambulance service? In its uh, at the present time, in our last budget that we uh, passed, we have a million dollars appropriated for this service. Will that be enough money? Uh, this is uh, problematical. It may, it may not be due to the fact that we have to buy new equipment, and we're going to buy new ambulances fully equipped with the, uh, with the highest quality of equipment that we can put in them and the necessary quality needed to be, to be in that ambulance. So you concluded that the care of the individual patient is more important than whatever money might be needed to pay for this? That's right. That's right. If we need more than a million dollars, it's going to have to be appropriated. Well, uh, I think that uh, I would have to rely on the wisdom and the judgment of the board itself. Uh, I, if they con consider that the decision was necessary uh, to, to keep the, the inflationary factor uh, arrested or within reasonable bounds, then, then of course I support it. I think we have to support the, uh, the board and the commission in their efforts to achieve the goals that we're talking about, namely the curbing inflation, the debasement of the buying power of the dollar. I think that's going to require the support and uh, cooperation of all Americans. But some of those aerospace workers had waited years for such a pay increase. Well, I don't think anybody likes the idea of having controls, but you either have them or you don't have them. And the Congress has vested this authority in the president and uh, in, the, uh, in the pay board and the, the price commission. Therefore, I think we have to abide by their decisions. <laughs> 